time and all the time. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all believe that? Don't Amen. 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 Well, we have a few that believe it. Amen. 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 We have a few tonight that believe it. I'll tell you what, if your God is not good, you ought to try mine. Amen. My God is certainly good all the time. Amen. We have a guest speaker on tonight. He's no stranger to the Miller Street Church, the Miller Street family. 
He's one of us. My wow. brother Terrence Peaks. From the Northside Church of Christ in Lake City, Florida. By the way of the Miller Street Church of Christ. In Orange Park, Florida. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Brother Beeks is a, a renowned, a renowned gospel singer and a gospel preacher. He has spoken here on numerous occasions. He's my friend, my brother in Christ. I love him. Amen. The Miller Street family here, we love him. Yeah. We're going to have one more song by Dougie Fresh. Yeah. He's in the house. Amen. 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 Brother Brown said earlier, we have a church tonight. Yes, sir. We got Dougie Fresh in the house. Yes, sir. Can't go wrong when you have Dougie Fresh in the house. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And the next horse you hear is Brother Terrence Beats. It's in my vein, well, it's in my vein, I said it's in my vein, well, it's in my vein, so while the blood is running warm, it's in my vein, well, it's in my vein, I said it's in my vein, well, it's in my vein. In my veins, without in my veins, well, while the blood is running warm, it's in my veins, well, it's in my veins. I say that I'm gonna sing just a little over there, and I'm gonna sing a little over there, and while the blood is running warm, it's in my veins, well, it's in my veins. I say that. Jesus. I want to first of all give uh, 
show uh, my, my sincere gratitude to uh, Brother Mike Jackson, a great friend, a loving, uh, he's my minister, amen, anyhow. Amen. Mike Jackson, uh, we love you. Uh, Cheryl and I, she send you love as well to you and the First Lady and to this great family here at the street. And uh, uh, you, you got to be at the street if you know what I'm talking about when you say at the street. We're talking about Miller Street. Amen. And uh, I want to thank uh, him for being so gracious to uh, invite us uh, on tonight. And I won't hold you long, but I will. Uh, we're going to have a meal, though. Some of us haven't eaten in a while, so we're going to um, eat a little bit tonight. Amen. Anyhow, uh, we're going to go. Uh, uh, first of all, want to ask you to turn to Galatians chapter two and uh, verse 19 through verse 20. I do need a reader uh, uh, that would be so graciously to read the word of God so that I can do some explanation. Uh, explanatory of the of what we're reading or explain what we're reading uh, uh, it'll make this go a lot quicker if we get one brother to be like Noah and uh, step up to the plate and read the scriptures so we just need somebody to read for us Galatians 2 chapter 19 ver through verse number 20 and the Bible says uh, let's, let's get you a mic Okay, so Brother Squire be my designated reader for tonight. So, uh, so anything, any scriptures that we have, uh, Brother Squire will uh, bless our bless us with uh, reading those scriptures. Galatians two nineteen. What does it say, my brother? Beginning with verse number nineteen, the Bible reads, "For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live." Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay, sound like you, you add one in there. But uh, 19 and 20. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, 19 and 20, it says, uh, what what does it, it say first of all, 19? 19, it says, for I through the law. For I through the law. Am dead to now, who is he talking here? Paul is talking. Paul says, I through the law. What does he say now? I through the law mm -hmm. am dead to the law. I'm dead to the law. Uh-huh. That I might live unto God. Now Christ made it possible for us to be dead to the law. Amen. He made it possible so that we uh, can live in faith through the liberties of Christ to, to be free to uh, serve him without having the burden of, uh, uh, of the law on, on our backs that the Jews had. The Jews had a burden that they were carrying around. Right. The law didn't have any type of grace built into it. The law didn't have any type of uh, 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 victory built into it. Because what the Bible, what the Bible teaches, what is it? Deuteronomy twenty uh, six and tw uh, twenty seven and twenty six is that if you if you, the, 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 that uh, that uh, basically if you if, if you if you uh, the law if you offend one part of the law, one part you guilty of it all. So the law didn't have any victory for us. We needed Jesus to come and die for us to give us victory. So here, uh, 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 read again for us in verse 19. It says, uh, verse 19 again. Uh huh. Says, for I through the law. For I through the law. Am dead. To am the law, dead to the law. Okay, keep going. That I might live unto God. Now I say he says that he might live. Okay, keep going. You said that I am crucified. I am crucified with Christ. Now what does that mean? I share in Christ uh, uh, in his challenges. Christ's priorities is my priorities. Christ, uh, his, 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 uh, his, his problems is my problems. I'm taking Christ's uh, uh, agenda up, not my own 
own agenda. That's what he's saying. Keep going, keep going, brother. It says that, nevertheless, I live. Now I live. How do I live? Yet not I. I am, I'm no longer Terrence. But Christ. Hold on now, name. hold on, hold on. Amen. Some, there's, some, there's some neck bones in there now. Amen. Come on now. Amen. So, okay. Now I got to put some hot sauce on the neck bones. So, uh, I, I'm no longer Terrence, okay? Terrence's agenda is no longer. Uh, your agenda is no longer the agenda that you're living by. It's Christ's agenda. All right. See, the reason why. And we're going to talk about that for the few minutes we have. There's a reason why we got to live by Christ's agenda. Amen. There's a reason why. We're going to talk about that. So we can get Brother Squire through these two verses here. <laughs> Amen. I love you, Brother Squire. Amen. Love you okay. more. <laughs> love you more. Okay. Never left, not I. But who not? But Christ. Live within me. We okay. And keep going. And the life. What and the life. I now live in the flesh. In the flesh. I live by the faith. I live by how? By the faith. I the live by fear of the law. Faith. I live by fear of the rules faith. of life. I live by fear that if I sin again, I'm going to hell. I live by fear. I don't live by faith. I live by fear. Is that what it's saying, brother? No, no, right. no, what it no, say? No. it's saying? I live by what now? You live by faith. We live by faith. Amen. If Adam and Eve had lived by faith, we'd be all perfect right now. Oh, it was one question. Uh, 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 all Adam had to do is not eat the forbidden fruit. It was one rule. And the only reason why God gave him that rule is to show that he had faith. From the beginning, Faith was a requirement for mankind. This is not something new. Right. Paul's not preaching no new gospel. This is the same teachings from the beginning of time. Yeah. Men need to have faith. Right. We need to trust God. Amen. Stop trusting ourselves. Amen. Every time we trust ourselves, we mess up. Amen. Amen. I haven't even gotten into my lesson yet. Amen. Uh, uh, what, what verse 20 says? The first one that says that I am crucified with I Christ. I am crucified with Christ, okay? Nevertheless, not I. Nevertheless, I live. Yet who lives in I, you? But Christ liveth who in me. Who lives in you? Christ liveth in me. So your purpose is a purpose. We have to have a purpose-driven life. Amen. We can't just go around and do like what our family, uh, how we grew up and how, 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 they, how they told us when we when we were growing up. We have to have a purpose-driven life. As Christians, and we're going to talk about that shortly here. Now, one key thing I want you to remember from this. Christ lives in me. I want everybody to say that. Christ, Christ lives, lives where? In me. Say it again. Christ, Christ does what? Christ, Christ liveth in me. Say it again now. Christ, Christ liveth in me. Now, I want you to think about what you just said. Man. Does Christ live in you? Does Christ live in you? Amen. Does Christ live in you? Now I want you to turn to your neighbor. And I want you to say, neighbor. Why should I love the Lord? Why should I love the Lord? Turn to your other neighbor. I still got another neighbor somewhere around here. Neighbor. 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 Why, why should I love the Lord? Should I love the Lord? Now that's not my subject. That's the question I want you to think about. Why should you love the Lord? My subject tonight is I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away so you can use me. Let's turn over to Romans chapter 12 verse 1 through 2 as we, we try to answer this question. Why should I love why should I love the Lord? Oh, uh, you know, why should I love or, or live for Christ? Why should I give myself for Jesus Christ? We want to answer those questions. In Romans 12, verse number 1, what does it say? I beseech you. Brethren. I beg you. I beseech you. Uh huh. Uh huh. Brethren, by the mercy of, by the mercy of, God. of God. Of God, okay. 
that you, that you present your bodies that you present uh bro, okay uh brother squad brother squad that you pre, uh present brother jackson's body right no. that's what it say right no it doesn't say that present who pre, what does it say what does it say present then? your body present your body present doug's body your body present uh 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 to, uh, present uh, 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 the Harvard's pre present the Harvard's body. Yo. See, our problem is in the church today is we too busy worrying about what other people are doing instead of working on checking ourselves. Right. We need uh, Christians who are self evaluators. Mm -hmm. We need Christians who are proactive in doing God's work. We need Christians who think. Uh, 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 who are more visionary minded who, who are more uh, 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 goal oriented because we have a great ministry here everybody uh, in this congregation and throughout the, 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 the kingdom of Christ Jesus have a mission it is not the minister's job uh, just to go out and teach people the gospel Jesus told us uh, in, in Mark 16, 15, and 16, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. He didn't tell just the, the preacher. Right. He didn't tell uh, just that brother. He told, he told all those disciples there to go into all the world. Now, Jesus also said over in Matthew 5 and, and uh, 14, for those who are taking notes, he says, uh, he says, uh, 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 let your, uh, he says, uh, ye are the salt of the earth, and if a salt has lost its savor, wherefore should it be salted? It is good for nothing but to be cast out and trotted under the foot of the men. It says, you are the light of the world, a city that sits on a hill, cannot be hid. He said, let your light so shine. So we need to have some spiritual influence. Mm -hmm. We need to influence people uh, by our, we, we influence people. We do influence people. Right. But how do we influence people? Amen. Do we influence them uh, with a negative attitude? Do we influence them? Yes, we do. Do we influence them uh, uh, by our frowns? By, uh, do we influence them about uh, uh, worrying about uh, the surroundings? See, we're supposed to make the impact on our surroundings. And here, uh, over in Romans 12 and 1 through 2, it's talking about how we have to surrender our bodies as a living sacrifice. Amen. Because Jesus already been the sacrifice for us, as we just talked about. If we allow ourselves, if we allow ourselves to be given over to Christ, Christ will give us everything. Do you not believe that? Amen. If you turn over to Matthew 6, verse 33... What does it say? Seek first the kingdom Amen. and his righteousness and some of these things. Oh, oh, that's what oh, it says, right? Oh. So the car. Oh. A house. Oh. You know, a, a good job. Oh. A husband. Oh, okay. Let me let it on. Okay, okay. A wife. <laughs> Amen. All these things. See, we're seeking the wrong things. We're looking for love in all the wrong places. Amen. But see, if we giving ourselves a way to let Christ use us, then Christ will uh, use our influence to influence others. What else it says in there? It says that uh, as a living sacrifice, but holy and acceptable. Holy, holy, and it what? Acceptable. Holy. We need some holy Christians. Right. Not cool Christians. We need some holy Christians. We need some Christians. Who are all Christian? We need some Christians who are Christians on Sunday night. We need some Christians who are Christians on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's right, Thursday. Like nobody we ain't writing, writing beats back no more. Anyway, Friday, Saturday. We need uh, uh, we need Christians, true Christians, disciples who were followers of Christ Amen. to to love God enough to invest the time to read his word, to pray to him, to not allow uh, the spirit of the devil 
to a, a, a to be engaged in their spirit. Do you realize right now you and I have the power of the Holy Spirit with us? Amen. The Holy Spirit is with you. You are a, a great person. You don't never have to look, let your head uh, hang down because you are great in the eyes of God. You are a child of God. Amen. All you have to do is pray and God got your back. It don't matter uh, if you have a sickness. God got your back. Amen. It doesn't matter uh, 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 if there's family problems or things that you can't control. Guess what? God got your back. There is something in the word of God for each and every one of us Amen. to help us. Amen. If you're struggling with something, guess what? We got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of who? Of his might. Stop trying to resolve your issues on your own. Use God's power to resolve the issues of your life. Amen. Oh, it's so easy to just make a decision. And the decision uh, uh, that you make a lot of times is the wrong decision. Amen. Look at Adam. Amen. He made the wrong decision. And look how it cost him. The same thing with us. We make the wrong decisions. And look how it cost us. A lot of times we sit around here with sour faces and don't even realize it's the result of our own actions. Our own decisions. And we want to blame God for the decisions we made. Amen. We need to thank God for our trials and tribulations. We need to thank God for our pain. We need to thank God for those dark times in our life. Because through all of them, through them all, he's brought us through. Amen. Every single time that we've had something go uh, difficult for us in our life, God has brought us through. We're going to turn over uh, our final scripture over to Psalms 103. Psalms 103. You still one verse coming uh, No, sir. Okay. Psalms 103. And uh, we're going to start reading in the verse 1. What is the Bible saying? Psalms 103. We got some. We got some. We, we got some collard greens. We done ate a little bit of the the the, uh, the pork roast. We, we got to put some collard greens and some macaroni and cheese with it. So that's over here in Psalms 103. We don't want to miss that. Uh, you know. So what does that say? Uh, start reading that for us. At, at what verse? Oh, uh, the first verse. Uh, in Psalms the 103rd division, beginning at verse number one. It says, "Bless, bless, the Lord. bless what now? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord." Keep going. Oh my soul. Oh my soul. I'm going to hang on to you now, um, Brother Squire. So you got to leave me there now. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. And all that is within me. And all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. God needs some people that love him enough to say this. We, God needs some people that's willing to give their life for him. Give their life as in their energy for him. Amen. God needs some people that's not scared to speak up and praise him. Amen. God needs some people uh, that, that that's, that's thankful that uh, they are in the church of Christ. Yes. There's a lot of people who haven't heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Right here in uh, uh, beautiful uh, Clay County, yes. there's people that have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, in the city of Jacksonville, there's people that have not heard uh, about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because we don't want to say nothing. We quiet on our jobs. We quiet in our neighborhoods. We quiet uh, with our family members. And they look at us and, and they see the expression on our face, uh, Brother Mike, and it's like, I don't know if I want to go over there either. Because some of us act like we don't have any joy. All right, come on. We need to have some joy. Amen. We need to be thankful because there are billions of people that's going to stay on the day of judgment and not going to make it in. Amen. So you should be excited knowing, uh, uh, we're going to turn over there quickly though. Uh, you, you stay there. We, I'm going I'm to I'm um, 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 get Brother Harvard over here to turn to uh, Hebrews 9 and 27. Hebrews 9 27. Because we need to recognize this. We need to recognize this. What does that scripture say for us, Brother Hargrave? And as a, and as it is appointed. It's appointed. 
unto man. Unto man. Wants to die. Wants to die. But after this, the judgment. Okay, now think about that now. Think about that now. Y'all sitting around thinking, okay, okay, the judgment is some way far off time whenever. As soon as you die, guess what? Right now, all of us standing in line right now for the judgment. Okay, yeah, that'll wake you up. Morning. All of us are standing in line right now. We're just alive. When your time to die, guess what? You just walk right on in line. You next. You see, you see that awakening? Now, now so while we sitting around here, uh, well, you know, I'm going to live 50, mile, 50, 60 more years, and then the judgment is about a thousand years from now. Once to die, and then after this is the judgment. You walk, wake, wake, you're going to wake up right on in the next, ne next. Okay. Oh, I, I just died. I just died. I just died. I didn't get a chance to get my story together. You know, so, uh, and, and we got to, right now, you know, we we, we, we around here, we around here worrying about uh, 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 getting it together. We better get it together right now. This grace is, is plenty. You say, you better watch out. You better not shout. You better not cry. I'm going to tell you why. Jesus Christ. It's coming to town. Y'all right, right. just need to remember that now. Yeah, okay, what else we say over here in the Psalms? In, in, uh, in verse number two. Uh -huh. uh, in terms of uh, Psalms. Come on, move, move me along, brother. In Psalms, I'm going to keep y'all here till midnight. Somebody's going to fall out the roof here. Yeah. It, said, it says that bless I'm not going to heal them, though. <laughs> well, I going to say, brother, go Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord. How many of us want to bless God with our soul? How many of you want to bless God with your soul? Amen. Clap your hands if you do. Amen. Boy, that's a run, run to God. I tell you, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. How many of y'all want to bless God with your soul? How many of us have some joy in our heart right now? Amen. God can take us tonight. This could be it. This could be the last decision. You know what? I'm a depending on what they do tonight in when and Wednesday is the whether or not I'm going. This could be it right here. Keep going, brother. And forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. We got so many benefits with God. We have. You need to go back and read this 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 psalm here. But we have a lot of benefits with God. We can go to God in prayer. We can ask God for anything we need. We can actually ask God for anything we want. Amen. We all we, we 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 have. He has our back. He has a, a protection around us. He has protection around our family, our kids, because we are children of God. Amen. There are a lot of people right now that uh, suffer. I work in the mental health uh, uh, area right now, uh, and there's a lot of people that that has a lot of struggles in their life, a lot of challenges in their life. They don't know how to deal with these challenges, but God has helped you. He's, he's, he's sustained you. And, and, and even though there's people, negative forces around you that try to discourage you, God empowers you no matter what. He gave you the Lord's church for Christians to encourage one. Do you, okay. We used to look, I used to look at this as a, as a hospital. This is not just a hospital, brothers and sisters. The church is a mental hospital. The church really is. It's a mental hospital. There's some of us in here that, that got some issues. There, there's some of us that in here that got some attitudes. There's some of us in here that's uh, backstabbers. There's some of us, I ain't saying in here. I'm just saying, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. <laughs> Mike can't get with me about anything, okay? I'm just saying, this, I ain't, this don't, leave this all on me, okay? But there's some people in the church that's all kind of things. But we got to be careful that we don't discourage nobody from uh, going to heaven. Keep going, brother. It says in verse number three, it says that who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who give, God forgive you all your sins. Keep going. Who healeth all thy diseases. All the things you can remember in your life, God have taken care, right? right. You remember that cold uh, that you thought you'd never get over? God got you over it, didn't he? Keep going, keep going, brother. Who redeemeth thy life. He redeemed my life. From Destruction. From destruction. You, you know, there's many times we could have lost our life. Amen. Many times. I mean, you, you can think of a personal testimony of something that could have happened to you. That near uh, fatal car accident. That near 
you know, somebody shooting and the bullet go right by you. You know, you, you have your own personal testimony, but there's many times, but guess what? God protected you. All right. He was there for you. Amen. Keep going, brother. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness. He he crowned you, he he crowned you with kindness. Now listen, now, now hold on to that. Keep going. And living mercy. And living mercy. How, oh my goodness, how many sins have you committed in the last year that God has forgiven you of? Meanwhile, you sitting around worrying about what somebody else and what they doing wrong. And all the sins you done committed, but you judging this person over here about what they done did wrong. You need to be looking at yourself. Michael Jackson said, what is that? I'm looking at the man in the mirror. Well, you need to look at the man, the woman, and the, 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 the child in the mirror. We got to do that. Keep going. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things. He, he, he satisfies us with good things. Keep going. So that thy youth is renewed like the angel. I'm yeah. Sorry, like the eagles. Like the eagles. So we, we renew. So we should have some jump, jumping out, uh, some, some, some pep in our step. We should be some, some excited people. We should be ex some excited people. But so the reason why a lot of times Christians are not excited because we're too busy worrying about somebody else. All right. While you're spending all that time and energy on somebody else, you should be spending that energy on rejoicing of what God has brought you through in your own personal Christian experience and sharing that to others. God brought me through this. This is why you should come to the Lord because uh, look what he did to me. But if I'm focused on you, Pat, then I'm, I don't have time to be worrying about what God has done for me. I'm supposed to be praising God, adoring God uh, in my worship. I should be focusing on God, giving him my all. Mm -hmm. But if I'm worried about what you're doing and how you're worshiping, then, uh, then uh, I don't have time to think about myself. Keep going, brother. Mm -hmm. In verse number six, the, the Bible reads that the Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. So, so even though you don't realize this, but everybody that did you wrong, some, 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 some is happening to them in their life. You round and worry about getting even with somebody. You child of God, you ain't got to get even with nobody. God got your back, really. He does. You, you, you just don't know. God really has your back. Keep going, brother. He made known his ways. He made him known his ways. To Moses, unto Moses. Now, now the thing about it is, he made known his ways, but sometimes we don't study his ways. He made known his ways. He write right here in this book, the same book that we're gonna be judged by. Now, why would you, uh, if you're gonna take a test, why would you? And, and you was given the cheat sheet for the test. Why don't you study the cheat sheet? That's a totally different sermon. But anyway, this is your cheat sheet right here. It's not what your buddy say, your friend, or, or anybody say. It's this here. We all men and women, all trying to serve the Lord. It's based on what this says. Keep going, brother. Amen. It also says that his acts are unto the children of Israel. It goes on to say that the Lord is merciful. He's merciful, huh? And, and gracious. He's gracious. Keep going. Lord, slow to anger. Slow to anger. And plenteous in mercy. Plenteous in mercy. He will not always uh, chat, neither will he keep his anger forever. He, see, say that again now. He will not always. Uh, he will not always chat. Chad, okay. C -H -I -D -E. Right, right. Keep neither going. will he keep his anger forever. Right. He has not dealt with us after our sins. There we go. That's what I want you to see. Amen. Read that again. Read that again. He, said he has not dealt with us after our sins. No. I, now rewarded us according to our iniquity. You hear that? God has not dealt with you the way you deserve to be dealt with. Because you are his child. It's a, you, 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 you really need to be dealt with. But God haven't dealt with you. That's love. Think about it. That's love. That's why we should love him. That's why we should sacrifice for him. That's why we should tell people about him. Because he's watching right now. He's always watching. Keep going. 
For as the heaven is high uh -huh. above the earth, above the earth, so great is so, His mercy. So great them. is His mercy. Oh, He has some great mercy right. for us toward them that mm -hmm. fear Him. That fear Him. That's it. I mean, uh, if you want me to go further, I'm, I'm waiting on you, bro. Okay. <laughs> I just, I don't keep going. Keep going. going. Yeah. Keep I going. don't want to go to hell yet. But it's, but verse number twelve says, "As far as the east is from the west." Yes, sir. So far have He removed our transgressions. Ooh, Lord, have mercy, Jesus. That's your shout moment right there. Amen. As far as the east, think about that. It's the east. Jacksonville's here. Way over on the west, that's way on Oceanside, California. Yes, sir. Imagine all that. You know about what I'm talking about when I say Oceanside. <laughs> all the way, way over there. So all that distance, that's how far God has removed all that 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 dirt, that that, that dirtiness, that sins, them, that, that, that filth from you. We should be rejoicing about that. All, right. All that should make us happy. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, Thank you. for your grace and your mercy. Amen. Amen. What else you got in there for us, brother? It has, like as a father pitteth his children. Uh-huh. So the Lord pitteth them that fear him. Right. So if we fear God, if we trust God, fear is trust, respect. Amen. If we respect God, a child respects their parents. That's They love their parents. That's why the child obeys their parents because they love their parents. If we love God like we say we uh, love him, then we have to show action. The Bible, Jesus told us that he that uh, 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 that we must uh, he that believe and is baptized, right? Mm -hmm. You can't just believe God and show no action. Your faith have to give action. The action from your faith Amen. is that you went and, and went and became and you bap, got baptized. Amen. The same way as Christians, we can't say we love God and we don't do anything. Now it doesn't matter what we do if uh uh if that's not what what we do is not going to get us into heaven. Just doing things because as the scripture teaches. We, 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 God's not going to give us the opportunity to boast on just us doing just doing good deeds. We need to do things because we love God. Not because the preacher asked you to do it. The preacher shouldn't have to ask you to go out and, and pass out tracts in the community. The preacher shouldn't have to ask you to go and have a Bible study with somebody or invite someone to church. You should do that because you love the Lord. Because on the day of judgment, the preacher going to be standing for himself. And you're going to be standing for yourself. Remember, you're going to just wake up next. Oh, where Brother Jackson at? Um, this this um, um, Terrence, um, we're talking to you. Oh, there's nobody else here but you. Oh, oh, oh okay. I thought, I, thought the, I thought the preacher was going to be here. I thought the brother, I thought, the, I thought, I thought uh, Brother Hargrave was going to be here with me. You know, I thought Brother Squire was going to be standing right here beside me. <laughs> I ain't say that. I ain't say that. But this, we have to be able to uh, uh, evaluate ourselves. Now, I'm going to leave you with these few points, and I know time is spent on us now. So we're going to go ahead and secure that for right now. But the thing about it is, is that we have to focus on the fact that proactive Christians are the best Christians to move God's purpose today. We cannot be reactive Christians. Just because you don't like me, I don't care. Uh, I'm going to serve. I'm going to love you anyway. Because you are a part of the kingdom of Christ. Uh, just because you talk about me I'm not. Even, I don't care because I'm going to focus on the mission of Christ. I'm trying to get to heaven, and if getting to heaven means I got to love you, despite you, then that's what I'm going to do. Amen and a half. So we got to show God that we love Him. And tonight, if you feel like that your challenges in your life, you feel like, oh Lord, I know, I know what I'm capable of doing, but I haven't given you 
everything. I haven't given myself to you. Tonight, we'll be happy to pray with you and for you. If you are not a member of the Lord's church, then you already have a major problem. That problem is, is that the soul that sinneth it shall die. And if we die in our sins, where he is, we should not be. We have to come to him by hearing his word, believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, repent of our sins, confess his name, and be baptized into Christ Jesus. Being baptized will wash away our sins. It'll give us a new attitude, a new existence. And today, right now, if you stand in need of prayer, if you need some victory in your life, if you just want to start over, if you just, you, you, you're, tired, you're tired of allowing the devil to, to, to hold you back and to, 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 to stamp on your victories, tonight you can end it. If you're tired of not being the Christian that dedicates themselves to um, following God and working for God, tonight you can end it. Tonight you can give God the victory and give the devil a defeat. As we stand and sing the song of encouragement, will you come? Will you come? sins that we committed may be sin of omission, commission, or disposition, word, thought, or deed. And we pray, Father, that these sins will not count against us in this life and life to come. Father God, we want to uh, pray and, 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 and thank your manservant for having still bold in your pulpit, sharing with us a portion of your most holy and divine word. Father, we pray that each individual under the sound of his voice gave an attentive ear to the things that he was trying to impart to us, and we pray that we may be able to extract all of the golden nuggets from the lesson, not only to apply to our lives, but also being in a position to share with those individuals that we come in daily contact with. We want to pray for those individuals who had the desire to be here, but for some reason could not, but we pray that they'll be back with us at the next appointed time. 
Father God, we come in behalf of Sister Mika, who is traveling uh, uh, out west, uh, out uh, in Las Vegas, but we pray, Father, that the flight that she take, uh, she will, uh, as a result of her being on that flight, even though she has not flown before, she has fear in terms of flying, but as a result of her being on that flight, Father, all the lives on that plane that will be saved as a result of her Amen. presence. Amen. Father God, we pray that you will continue to put a protective shield around her and protect her from all of the fiery dots that comes in her direction. We pray that she will have safe arrival there as well as coming back. Father God, we pray for her beloved husband who will be here taking care of the children. We pray, Father, that you will give him uh, the necessary strength that he needs in order to be able to uh, deal with those matters that he normally does not deal with in hopes that he would not become so frustrated. Father God, again, we want to pray for those individuals who had a desire to ask for prayers, but for some reason did not. But we know that you are an omniscient God, meaning that you're all knowing. You know our thoughts even before we give birth to them. And we just pray, Father, that you will uh, continue to uh, allow your will to be done in our lives. We pray that even all of the uh, trials and tribulations that we are confronted with, we just pray, Father, that we realize the fact that those things that we are unable to control ourselves, we need to put it in your hand and allow you to deal with the situation. Allow you, just like you shared with Jehoshaphat, this battle does not belong to you. This battle is mine. All I want you to do is just sit back and spectate and watch me operate. Father God, we just pray. Uh, for your uh, continued presence. Uh, we pray for those individuals also that are sick within this congregation and all of our sister congregations. And we pray that you will heal them all with the stripes to the point that they can be restored to their normal health and being able to go about your daily tasks and being able to uh, take care of uh, their uh, uh, business affairs. And Father God, we want to pray for our young folk, our children. We pray that they will be safe during the summer. We pray that no harm come. Uh, to them, we want to pray for those caregivers. We want to pray for those that are in nursing home. We want to pray for those that are incarcerated, those that are homeless and hungry. We pray that, that when we meet these individuals that fall in either one of these categories, that we will be able to uh, help meet their particular need. And Father God, again, we want to thank your man, sir, who stood boldly and shared with us a portion of your holy and divine word. We pray that you will continue to crown his head with knowledge to the point that wherever he go, he will be able to expound on your word and being able to share with people uh, uh, your word to the point that they can ask the greatest question on the face of this earth, what must I do in order to be saved? But Father God, we also want to pray for the food that has been prepared for us. We also pray for the hands uh, and we pray that the food that they have prepared will nourish our bodies and give us the strength to tear Satan's kingdom down. And Father God, as we leave this building and not your present, we pray that we all will return at the next appointed time. We won't continue prayers for our minister and his family, and also continue prayers for his health. And we want to pray for all those individuals who have uh, certain kinds of uh, medical issues. Some of them are terminal, but we pray, Father, that it will continue to build uh, their faith in you and trust in you and have assurance and confidence in you that you will have their back. This is the prayer that we ask in your son's name, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Unless we have any announcements.